And welcome. This is Bronyville episode 120, recorded on August 24th, 2013. I am your loose cannon, Chef Sandy. Ooh, I am here and doing the show, and AC can't stop me because he doesn't have good enough internet to do so. Joining me today as a co host is the even looser cannon, M. Deathmech. Howdy. Hello. We uh, let him out of the Bronyville basement and, uh, He'll be joining us to... Whatever, man. The Bronyville basement's tight. We got a pool table. Yeah. We've furnished that place pretty nice. It's not like it's uh, really that bad. And uh, we're getting an uh, arcade machine down there pretty soon, too. Oh, good, good. I hope it's Robotron 2084. Uh, it'll nice probably be... Loud, uh, nice and loud theme for you. It'll be a MAME cabinet. Don't worry. Um, joining <laughs> us today also as our guest is Mark Spence. Head of Operations at Nightmare Nights Dallas. Wow! What a crazy get. I mean, who would think that we would get somebody from that con to come on the show? Ah. Yeah. Uh, so, how goes it in the Pony Lands for you folks? I hear you're in Spokane. That oh, sounds hopped, up on cold, hopped up on cold meds, so I'm fine. This is going to be yes, a fantastic I, episode. I am in, I am in the Spokane's. I don't know why I'm in the Spokane's. Yeah. You were just, yeah, I'll just, I don't know. You first you think you're in South Dakota, and then all of a sudden you're you're in a completely different state, and you don't know why. I mean, you it know just it all kind of looks the same, right? I mean, you got Dakota, Montana, Idaho, Washington, that whole stretch. Yeah, yeah. There's more mountains out here than in. Than in South Dakota, South Dakota is pretty flat. I mean, you know, a logging truck rolls over into it's a state of emergency out there. Yep. Because they just keep rolling. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, and Mark, you're yes. uh, you're here joining us today, and from the great state of Oklahoma, Texas is hat. Exactly. And uh, hop up on cold medicine. Texas Junior. Yeah. Yes. You try so very hard, but I don't think you can top our governor. <sighs> Politics. I think I'd want to. No, um, he wouldn't. Yeah, up here in uh, OKC, doing our part to drum up business for the con. Yep. And uh, we'll discuss you and your bona fides here in just a little bit. <laughs> but before we do that, we have to do something that's the start of every show that if we don't do, AC says we have to stop. And uh, we're not going to get off the wild ride yet. So uh, we have to ask <laughs> two questions. Favorite character and favorite episode. We're going to start with Mark and then M. Def Meg. So right. who is your favorite character there? Favorite character uh, comes and goes. I guess, I'll, uh, I guess I'll spin the wheel and it'll stop today on Luna. Poor, poor sort of out of place, awkward Luna. Yes. I think this is going to be possibly a double Luna episode. Hmm. What about you, M. Def Mech? Uh, I'm going to also have, also have to say Luna, too, but mostly because she's, like, loud and and loud and likes video games, and, yes. and she's very competitive, and she does that whole, uh, that whole Roadrunner thing yes. with her legs. She, she has a very That's, skilled pony, and she has magic t-shirts. Yeah, a magic t-shirts that are really, that kind of, so she's got kind of an attitude. She's yep. got kind of a tube going on. Blame her Plus sister. she yells. Plus yeah. she yells a lot. So. So, uh. There you go. <laughs> favorite episodes. Um, I'd have to, uh, because it has probably the darkest 90 seconds I've ever seen on a little kids show uh, I'd probably have to go with putting your hooves down I'm not uh, sure how, I'm not sure how they got away with uh, Fluttershy tearing Rarity and Pinkie Pie new ones like that but that's, uh, yeah that's pretty mean Fluttershy yeah. really uh, you know if she had fingers in that one scene she'd be showing us one what about you and Def Mech? well it's 
it's honestly kind of a toss up between. Uh, oh god! Oh crap! I forgot the name of it. The Halloween special and and then Sleepless in Ponyville because obviously Luna. But um, I'd have to say yeah, the Nightmare Nights one. Yeah. Uh, just just because it's so wacky and. And Luna just tries so, so hard to be accepted, but much like, you know, she just doesn't get it. You know, she's just been, she's been trapped in her, she was just trapped in her, in her basement playing, you know, grinding EverQuest for a thousand years and totally forgot how to talk to people. Yeah. You know. She, she's just so misunderstood. Yeah, she's I mean, like, I want to make friends. I want to make friends. Here's some spiders right in your face. <laughs> Everybody loves spiders. Yeah, look at their fuzzy. So yeah, yeah, yeah that that episode, Halloween special, very Luna centric. Really yes. So this she's is like, a point where uh, you get to help us out, uh, Mdefek. We get normally AC would pass the sponsors on to me, but I'm going to have to do it to you this week. So you want to okay, read it? So, you have the Google Doc active? Yeah, yeah, I have it. Um, all right, yeah, yeah, I'm there. I'm there. Uh, all right. Uh, Bronyville sponsors are We Love Fine. If you want to get your your T-shirts and your backpacks and your bags and your hats and your keychains and your arts and all that stuff, you're gonna you're gonna buy, you're gonna put on, and people are gonna be like, "Well, that guy's weird. Why is he wearing all that stuff?" You know, yeah, I mean, here here at the Kmart. Uh, well, you can all do that at at, at welovefine.com. Ten percent off purchase with the code Bronyville ten to get your uh, to get all your awkward pony stuff. And make people wonder, like, what? Well, well, really? Seriously, guy? <laughs> that's a thing. And that's a thing. Yeah, yeah. People put those shirts on, and then they go to like Walmart. They they dress up for Walmart. Well, I mean, yeah. It's not like everybody yeah. has a dollar palace where they don't have to dress up. Yeah, yeah. You know, Dollar General. You know, that's, better than, that, better than that's Crocs and the, better than Crocs and pajama pants. Yep. But true, hey, if you true. want to do that, they do have some pajama pants now. <laughs> oh, really? Nice. Yeah. Nice. Pajama top, pajama pants and a tube top. All pony. All pony. With your Rainbow Dash backpack and your Derpy Hooves trucker cap off, cocked off to the side a little bit. All they need, all they need yeah. are just some, all they need are just some, like, MLP grills that you can put over your teeth. From your, from your mouth to God's ear. <laughs> you just wait. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten percent off. We love fine. Bronyville ten code. Do go do that. Go do that. Give these give these guys money so they can go to the cons and make better podcasts. Um, and yeah. and and you know what? There's something coming up. You know, you, you you went and bought all this cool pony swag at WeLoveFine.com. You're like, I got all this cool pony swag, but I'm embarrassed to go out in public wearing it. What can I do with all of it? Well, you can come down to Nightmare Nights Dallas, throw all that crap on, and be like, Hey, I'm among friends. I won't get pe- I won't get insults thrown at me here because I'll be cool with all my pony swag. Yep. Nightmare Nights Dallas. That marinates dot net. That's uh, pony That's, shirts are uh, definitely welcome. Yeah, yeah, and that's down there. Where, what town is it? Addison, Texas. It's in Addison, Texas, which is a suburb uh, north of Dallas, and the stream just died. Anyways, yeah. we're recording it, and people can hear, so we'll just keep on going. So where? Oh yeah, I think. Well, we just we just. And it's sponsors, so I think we can move on. Yes, we're going to move on to topic time. Nightmare Nights Dallas Progress Update. People are texting me. All right, so first of all, uh, we've got Mark here, our head of operations, and he has been working with our somewhat extensive panel list so far and uh, been working on our schedule. So, uh, Mark, what yes. kind of, ske- of panels have you uh, had the pleasure of having to schedule? Well, we've got a list built at this point of around 
Let me do a rundown. About 44 inches. Between things that look like they're pretty well pinned in and, and some open slots, uh, somewhere in the 40, 40 range, good number of which are already sort of locked in with, with folks attached to them. Uh, mm-hmm. We've got, uh, we have uh, Paper Ponies with a Shadow Box class, um, EQD coming to do a panel, uh, Full Papers are showing. Showing up, doing his uh, mythological influences in Pony. Uh, FOB Equestria, doing a military bony panel. Something called Art Jam just sort of appeared on the list as well. Yeah, if I recently added that, I figured uh, since we have the corral, it's a 24-hour. If we want to mm-hmm. put down some mechanical pencils and drawing paper and encourage some artists to sit down and practice their art, maybe do a mini uh, artist training grounds event. We, of course, have the, the, the typical uh, first con experience, cosplay, panels. Um, opening ceremonies, we've been pondering, uh, we're sort of sliding it up and down the, the calendar, figuring exactly where to put it. Right now, it looks like we're contemplating having an, uh, an evening opening, mm-hmm. um, keeping maybe a little more in the theme of, of this being a nightmare, you know, being, being a night sort of thing, perhaps sliding this into an evening uh, getting some things done in, in the morning and afternoon and then sliding the opening down. Yeah. We're, uh, I mean, we actually, I just looked at the uh, submission form and we've gotten, I think, three more panels that have been added uh, just this last bit. So that'll be cool. We have M.A. Larson coming, so he will be doing a piece on screenwriting. Yep. Um, oh geez, you're gonna have Chef Sandy and M. A. Larson and me there at all at the convention. Just wow. a bunch of loose cannons, just going off on everything. Yeah, you know that wow. M. A. Larson guy. He uh, he opens his mouth and changes the world. It's you know now we have to deal with these bat ponies. He's not even writing this season, and he's causing trouble. Yep. Yeah, That's yeah, you got these. These weird bat ponies that that, <laughs> that that slash MLP slash is is all about, you know. It's uh, you know, thanks, Emily Larson. <laughs> uh, it's actually pretty funny because our staff artist is going back and changing the our Kano C the night guard pony around to actually be a bat pony now because it's yeah they're a separate race and they guard Luna. Oh, hmm. Thank Lauren Faust for some of that too. She she encouraged she yep. encouraged him. She's like, yeah, that sounds that. good. Exactly. And uh, Word of Faust still still stands, even if she's not been on there for a couple of years. It's her baby. The very definition of the term emeritus. Yes. So, how do they interact with the West, rest of Equestria? Do they just sort of trade guano for everything, or? Well, you know, they gotta yeah. get their torch fuel somewhere and nitrate yeah, fertilizer. fertilizer. Yeah, I sense, yeah, a, you know, I sense a potential panel here. Yeah. Bad yeah. ponies. What's the deal? <laughs> exactly. What's the deal? What what do they do? I mean, are they are they just spooking people or are they just being all sparkly or do they have any real industry? Yes. What do bat ponies do aside from be night guards? Yeah. There we go. Somebody come do that panel. Should jot that in. <laughs> and you know, bat ponies, what's the deal? Coming soon. Then I'm nice Dallas. Additionally, um, I was kind of hoping to get him on, uh, but Zyro, uh, Fox Pony Flap Horse, is doing our dance. Uh, we've recently uh, upgraded the dance from uh, it's an afterthought to okay, fine, we're gonna make it a thing. Uh, Some very spirited discussions around that. Yeah, um, the the amount of musicians we've had um, submit is pretty good, and we had some people that are like, "Oh, I'm a musician, and uh, I want a bunch of money to come down." We're like, "You know, we're running this on a shoestring budget, right?" Uh, hey, you know, this is a ball. This is a this is a nonprofit group, right? Yes. So we're uh, being very careful with our expenditures, but. We did have some budgeted for it, and uh, both Zyro and some of the PVL guys have stepped up and have said they're going to give us a little bit of financial assistance 
to make sure things go well. I, I you know what, since I'm going to be down there, I can volunteer uh, to help out this dance. I'll, I'll run around with a balloon and uh, just come up to come up to people dancing and just be like, all right, if I can't if I can't fit a balloon in between you two, you guys are too close. Come on, let's break it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Got to keep that dance, you know, and make sure the skirts are below the knee, and uh, yeah, that you know, yeah, and make, make sure everybody's out by nine. Yep. You know, <laughs> no, no hanky panky allowed. Uh, but yeah. we are accepting demos for uh, electronic musicians or whatever live musicians. We're going to be doing live music on Friday. Um, we have a few artists already lined up uh, who are going to do live music with real instruments. And then we're going to do some uh, dance music afterwards. But Saturday is going to be the big dance. And it can go pretty darn late. So if you're a musician and get your butt to Dallas and cover your room, if you are a DJ and put on a set that we accept, your badge is covered. Just saying. Nice. Uh, and, that's, and that's both real instruments and fake instruments. Yeah, so if you're a dance musician or whatever... If you're going to do a set 30 minutes or more that's approved, covered. So try right. that out. And you can send those demos to av at nightmarenice.net. And we're also looking for AV assistance. Um, we have a number of folks already lined up, but the more people around to give old Zyro a hand, the better. Um. And <laughs> I would have gotten our uh, vendor head on today, but I think she's busy. So, because we've pretty much finalized our vendor, li- vendor list. Uh, we only have a couple people, a couple slots that are not quite final yet. Um, we have Pix Kitties, uh, guys from My Little Ties. We've got representatives from We Love Fine, Kefka Floyd, Anime Cat, Giant Mosquito, and a bunch more um have you taken a look at the list uh there uh, mark i have not where's the master list oh i will uh drop Let's see anyone with link okay done i will drop the list into our chat because that thing has people's real names on it i don't want that uh, getting out no. but we have uh, yeah. Got ourselves quite a nice list of vendors so far. Uh, a grand total of uh, 50. And we're making sure that everything goes well. Our vendor head, Jessica, is extremely accomplished and has been doing vendors for no less than three cons uh, on some level for the last six years. So she uh, knows what she is doing. If there are any problems, you can tow to her. And also, something that... Uh, uh, oh, what? I was just about to say, so... Uh, we can be assured that this, this that uh, we won't have any repeats of what's happened before. You guys are running a pretty solid con, it looks like. Oh, yeah. Um, and yeah. it's one of those things. You see these cons, and you see the issues that happen, or the things that people are unhappy about, and you say, what can we do that makes that better? Well, at least for the vendors, um, vendors are going to be able to pick up their badges in the dealer's room from the dealer's so head. So that way they don't have to worry. They don't have to go. So that way they can just get their get all their stuff set up right away so once people start coming in they can start they can start hawking their wares and getting monies yep because uh, we should have set up for Thursday night and if we don't the room doesn't open until noon on on Friday so they'll have set up between 8 and noon nice it's going to be an extra <laughs> For the vendors that have dealt with these cons before, it is going to be a brand new day for them. Yeah, it's going to be like, oh boy, I can, I, I, I don't have to worry about about losing a ton of money. Wonderful, I can actually maybe break even or even make a profit at this con. Yep, that's always a plus. Yes, and uh, one thing that we've also got. 
coming up. The uh, our social space and our social gaming, because we'd like we're gonna have uh, uh, you know the usual apples, apples board games. The organization owns a ton of board games and whatnot, so people can sit and be social in our corral area. And if things go as planned, we might, might, uh, possibly, maybe, hopefully, have uh, interplay with the card game. But I was about no to ask that. Yet. Um, I was about to ask that. So that's still that's a possibility, but it's still not guaranteed. Yes. Um, All right. Considering that the folks at Interplay are going to cons like every single week, and last week was Gen Con, where they're doing they were doing some pretty heavy testing of the card game. They've not really been replying to emails, mm. but we have dealt with. Well, Bob has dealt with them before, so yeah, we're we know how things go. Well, I have a card against a Cards Against Humanity deck, so I could definitely bring that down. Yeah, super fan. Yeah, those friendly. are always fun. Yeah. Those are those are always fun. Not 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 for the little ones, <laughs> but definitely a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, um, our artist alley and the game room and the corral basically are going to be twenty four hour. You know, we want people to socialize and hang out and keep their shenanigans contained. Um, because I mean, if you're bored at two in the morning, maybe somebody's out there playing a game of cards. Or singing on the My Little Karaoke. Because we totally have that, too. That would be good for all the Tumblr people. Oh, yeah. Seeing as how they don't seem to have bedtimes. Yep. I should know. And, I mean, if people are Tumblr artists and uh, would like to, you know, and they don't want to do vending hardcore, they can still buy an Artist Alley table. It's ten bucks a day for half a table in the Artist Alley, and you can buy it online right now. So nice. they can sit down, take their commissions for a day, and then deliver them when they're done. Nice and easy. Um, and, I mean, yeah, you got to have a tax ID and all that fun stuff, but dealing in Texas is way easier than a lot of other states. Yeah, Texas is pretty loose. A pretty loose cannon about that stuff. Yeah. It, it's something in the water, I tell you. It's all that fluoride <laughs> And the natural gas. There's that. Yeah, all that, all the fracking and the fluoride and the Texas tea. And yep. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, hang on, guys. Because we're almost to the news section. And AC asked me, "What's the fire status?" Fire. Fire. What fighter? There's no fire. Everything is fine. Nothing is ruined. Don't go near the dog park. Exactly. There's so many well, potential the- Night Vale references with, particularly with Luna. It's like Luna was banished to Night Vale. Nothing makes sense to her now. Yep. Well, see, I was about to draw a comparison with, like, like what's going on in Montana, where it's like, if you stay on, like, Interstate 90 in Montana, everything looks fine, but you look out in the distance in the mountains, and you just see these swirling black clouds from the forest fire that's way over there that most of society doesn't even know this is happening. The glow cloud. It should, be, uh, it should be just left that way. Yep. Trying to add you. Don't know what I can do. We will see if AC can join us. Uh, but other than that, we'll keep going. Keep trucking. Yep. So, yeah, Nightmare Nights Dallas, it's definitely shaping up. We already have a very nice chunk of pre-registrations and room nights. Um, Pre-reg early, that helps us out. Um, There's never a point where you can't give us money. So you can pre-reg up until the day of the con. It's just $10 more at the door and the month before. So starting in October, which is about a little more than a month away, um, it's going to be... $45. $45. Ooh. Oh, jeez. It's going to just break that bank. So, pre-reg early, pre-reg often, get your room at the hotel. It's going to be really nice. And uh, they'll be doing their renovation. They're finishing up their renovations at the end of the month, doing a photo shoot. And when they do, we'll be posting a bunch of those photos to our Twitter, Tumblr, and website. So that'll be nice. Oh, uh, 
Oh, nice. So they'll have, like, uh, heating and air conditioning that actually works. Indoor plumbing, too. Indoor I mean, or pl- wow, wow. wow. And, and guaranteed only one or two snakes. Nice. No, this, nice. this is seriously a very nice hotel that's getting a lot of uh, renovations. They're doing it from, uh, ev- I mean, all the rooms, all the floors, the entire hotel is getting a complete renovation. Um, <laughs> a couple weeks and we, ago. And, 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 uh, I imagine we won't have to worry about ants, those weird Texas ants that love to crawl what? inside computers. and. Yeah, no, no, no. None of those. Okay, good, good. Bullet ants. I've heard, right I've, heard hor- I've heard horror stories about those weird Texas ants that that I don't, I don't know, like the like the build colonies inside modems and routers for some yeah. reason. So, That's cool. All right. So bring your own snakes. And just a just a little tip from me. Uh, since it is November, where it's gonna be start r- rolling into the winter time, I'd highly suggest just personally just try to get your flu shots before coming in to the con. Yeah, don't be uh, don't be the plague pony. Yeah, don't be patient yeah. zero, please. Yeah, um, don't. Yeah, you know, leave 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 Pax Plague at Pax or you know. Brony Plague. Because I heard yeah. the Bruni Con uh, wipes some people out pretty hard too. Uh, Chocolate yeah, Con was know, one of those people. Yeah, you know, get, get your flu shots. You know, fit, okay, bro, hoof instead of shake hands. You know, cough into your sleeve. You know, drink a lot of water. What was that? What was that one rule? Uh, six two six, one. Six two one. Six, two, one, do that. Six hours of sleep, two meals a day, and a shower. Yes. Um, Apple well, Fighter you... will be doing the Your First Con panel uh, directly after opening ceremonies, so that'll be uh, heavily emphasized. And I'll be I'll be that one jerk who's, who, who went down to Dollar General and got like a 36-pack of ivory soap, and then whenever I hear smell a whiff of something, I'll just come up to somebody politely and hand them a bar of ivory soap. <laughs> Just to get the get the message, we actually did that at the anime store here in Sioux Falls. They had a big box of soap, and whenever somebody who was particularly right come in, yeah, they would just politely just walk up next to him while they're at a table and just place a bar of soap. Well, what's funny is that Furry Fiesta, the other con that the that drama runs, part of everybody's bag each year is a custom little bar of soap. Each year, nice. it's a custom bar of soap that has a different design, and people collect them. But we want people to use them. Clean your filthy yeah. bodies. Yeah, the unwashed masses. <laughs> so, that's good. it's going to be a lot of fun. You guys should totally go to a brand new website that got uh, put together by Silvermane of FOB Equestria. Those guys are great. They're going to be helping us out a lot. Brand new website. Integration with Vanzilla on the page. Super easy to uh, register and get everything set up. Do it, Philly. Do it. So. Do it now. Um, I think that's about it for the topic. Um, unless anybody else had any questions. I don't have any questions. I'm going to be down there. I yep. may or may not be on a panel cons- with if I'm. If I can, if I can be bothered to fire off an email to you guys, letting you know yeah. instead of just showing up, being like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be on this panel." Hi. Yeah, we're gonna have we have a ton of media representation at the con, so one or two more people ain't gonna add too much. So <laughs> it's gonna be this so. mega panel with like a dozen people all vying for attention and being like, "Listen to me!" No, listen to me. You should listen to me because I'm more professional. Uh-huh. Well, we are the most professional podcast. Yes. <laughs> We're the losers cannons. So, news. Hey, there's been not a lot of news this week. No, not a whole lot. No, there's. I don't really, I don't really pay attention because it's like, oh, there's no new episodes, and I guess there's toys coming out and yeah. merch, and yeah, there's that card game. And, I don't know, a Comixology app on my iPad, like, beeped at me a couple days ago. I I guess there's a new micro-series issue out that I need to pick up Mm, with the CMC. So, we'll just 
Oh, yeah. I was say, well, I just saw that. that was the next topic. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It, fire status? What fire? There's no fire. Um, yeah, the... Where? Don't look! Don't look out at the horizon at that big billowing cloud of of smoke coming from the tumbler forest. Just ignore yes, that. And, and if any if any large animals fall from the from any glowing clouds, uh, well, um, just watch out for the lions. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, new status? What news? There's really been not a lot this week, as M. Defmex said. Toys have come out. Um, I've got the. Bon Bon and Spitfire uh, Funkos. They're supposed to come out in about a week. So that's nice. nice. Um, I got them early. What to do? So I have my Lyra and Bon Bon now. Ooh. Uh, the mini sets, the cake families with Nurse Red Heart and the tiny baby foals who are totally not for kids under three because they will choke and die. They are just that perfect size to block a small windpipe, uh, but they're really cute nonetheless. <laughs> and the uh, the Everfree Forest one that has the new model Fluttershy, the new model the short tailed short tailed rarity Nightmare Moon, and then Steven Magnet and the Manticore. So that's really nice. Oh right, I did pick those up. I did. I I totally forgot. Yeah, that, I that really I like the up. new that's Fluttershy. A- yeah, sorry. I, I do things and I forget about them. So I was like, I was like, yeah, I did. I did pick up that that set. That's a really nice set, actually. So yeah, I mean, they're like fifteen bucks. Um, one thing I'm kind of just they're fifteen with. bucks, but you get you get more. You get yeah. more ponies in them. Um, well, po- pony and manticore and dragon. Yeah, and. and- some of the TRUs wouldn't sell them because they got put out early, and then they realized, oh, wait, they're supposed to be uh, release dated. And so, like, when I went to my store and bought them, they just was like, Ugh, whatever, are these t- release dates? Whatever, it's a toy. And they ran it through. But um, Featherprop, one of our other guys on the con staff, tried, and he couldn't get them because they're like, oh, no, this is, this is dated, and uh, that manager actually cared enough to do that. Um, the, well, it's, they're, they're not like Walmart. Yeah, where where I actually w- I actually went to Walmart and got like Pokemon Black and White two like three days early, just because they they could they just they just didn't know. Yeah, they were just well, like, oh yeah. <laughs> I, Walmart doesn't really care. I don't think. Um, it, it's funny because. Back when I worked at Toys R Us back in the day, um, you would get the new releases and they'd have this bright orange and orange tape with black lettering. Street date with the date and very bold uh, writing and $10,000 fine or, or something like that <laughs> if you sold it early. And I'm like, yeah, really? Yeah, let's just take a box code of that. Um, I mean, yeah, the street dates are legit, but... Walmart, they don't care. Yeah, um, it's like it's Walmart's like, oh really? You're gonna fine us ten thousand dollars? Oh no. Okay, well, uh, well, guess what? You know, uh, I, you know, our subsidiary Asda dropped Nintendo from their from their store shelves. I guess we can do the same thing. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> no. I also picked up the fan favorite set too. It's okay. It's thirty five bucks. I- you're basically now, paying... What, what, what's that one have? The fan favorite set, too, as I pull it out, has a really crappy chrysalis, Lyra, Cadence, Shining Armor, Diamond Tiara, Lyrica, and Derpy. Um, Lyra's pretty good. Cadence is pretty good. Shining Armor's pretty good. And actually, really, the biggest disappointment is chrysalis, but... This is a 100% totally legit, holy crap, it's derpy in a box that says My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. It's legit product. Nice. How do they, so, how do, nice. What do they call her, though? Her, <laughs> the iconography is just a muffin. and uh-huh. Like, everybody else has a name. Uh-huh. Hers is muffin. Exactly. Whatever. Um, well, you know what? It's, 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 it, it, it's been like how, how many months 
since all that went down. Who cares? It's been Just a call year, her whatever. But yeah, it's yeah, like, we know who her name, what her name is. The people that are going to buy her stuff know who she is. Yeah, Voldemort of the fandom. Yes, cannot say her name. But no, no, that's that's a shame about. Well, you, you know, you can't expect them to. What's the biggest disappointment about the Chrysalis one? Because I haven't seen um, the. Uh, well, she doesn't have a little head thingy. This one's First. gonna be tough to mold. Um, well, yeah, yeah. I imagine that she wouldn't have the leg, the the yeah. cheese legs. Yeah. Basically, what they did is they used um, the standard princess mold. Her horn is just a standard horn that has some little decals on it. Um, the wings are just pony wings. They're painted a little differently. Um, and she still has, like, the molded hoof boots that Celestia and Luna and Twilight have. Right. Except yeah. just, you know, black body and there's color. little stickers on her to sort of look like leg holes. I mean, well, you know, you just you just take a Dremel, you know, a Dremel tool to her, and <laughs> you know, you could probably fix her up. Oh so, yeah, know? I mean, it, she's a good base, but it would take uh, a little bit of work to make her look really good. I mean, yeah. some people are uh, some people really like their bug horse, so I imagine we'll see some good customs off of this before too long. Oh yeah, a lot of weird people like like the bug horse. Ugh. She's a bug and a horse. That's terrible. She's a bug and a queen, and we all know what queen bugs are like. Yep. Wink, wink. So, bite the heads off their mates and lay a million eggs. <laughs> you said it. I didn't. Um. Though coming up is uh, in the next little bit is uh, they're going to be doing Celestia and Trixie and Applejack and Big Mac uh, Funko vinyls. So that's pretty exciting. Oh, nice. And, and they've said that Applejack will have her hat. Cool. So that is rather exciting. Other In, in, in other news, um, Equestria LA is kind of over. Um, basically, it was pretty successful its first two years. Everybody uh, was pretty happy with it. Things went well. But they uh, just don't have... Uh, Anybody coming in to take the reins from the outgoing chairwoman, and uh, they're just going to be like, all right, we're going to sit out this next year, see what happens, come back as something else. Well, I mean, that's not the end of the world. No, no. I mean, it's the convention organization exists, and they'll do something in the near future. I couldn't tell you what, but they may do a Western yeah, anthem. Someone's like convinced. Whoa! <laughs> your your mic, uh, Mark, Mark. Your mic is all no. is all wonky. I think that was apple cider. Oh, hey cider. Hey oh, guys. Uh, I, oh, apple man. cider just has to come in and crash on our little parade. Cider out of nowhere. No, out of the field. Hey guys, Bernie. I'm at Bernie can. You're up, you're up yeah, in the so, snow. So how's the Tim Hortons and the poutines? How oh much God, it's a miracle. Uh, I, I've already had some. I had some chicken poutine yesterday. It was pretty pretty rocking. Um, uh, I've, uh, I've only got a little bit of time. I've actually, we're about to do the auction, and I'm going to be up on the Ponyville Live stage doing some stupid. So um, just wanted to, to do that. But uh, it's been a pretty damn crazy trip so far um, to – sum up kind of what's happened at Bernie Can. Um, it is a billion degrees in the hallways. Um, a, it looks like it's going all right. The basics are here and everything's rolling. Guests seem like they're doing okay. Uh, I've netted the I netted Claire Collette to do an interview, uh, aka the voice of Sweetie Belle, uh, to do an interview with the Pony Bill Lives. And tomorrow I'm uh, I'm going to have uh, Andrea Libman and Tabitha St. Germain for an interview, so that's going to be good. Nice. Yeah, um, that's going to be a fun. Yeah, apparently my internet has been very awful today, so the stream is dead, but I'm recording right. it locally. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Do what you do. Yep. Um, 
Yeah, uh, other things that have happened, we, we palled around the park a, li- a little bit. Um, we ate in the restaurant that is under where DHX is, which nice. was kind of hilarious. They were, at, they were actually playing Martha Speaks on the TV, and when you're going like... <laughs> that's pretty funny. Um, and then I've got a bunch of stuff I can't tell you until we're in private, Sandy, because reasons. Oh, of course. I uh, look yeah. forward to that call once you're available off offline or whatever our secret planning Ooh. yeah do you do you have any questions about the con so far for me there you jokers uh things seem to be going well i haven't heard anybody screaming around on fire um the stream i've heard from up there is kind of iffy because the internet hotel is not the best yeah, the, we we were supposed to get one up, and we got point eight up. So it's it's kind of eh, but you know, considering the fact that we just you know we're doing what we got to do. Uh, us Celestia Radio and uh, a camera guy for EFN are all here. Uh, in addition to some other uh, some other media outlets, just some kind of regional. Uh, okay, well, I mean. As long as the PVLs get in the video, I mean, worst case, they can just upload it after the fact. That's about the best you can do. Oh, did we lose AC? <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> oh. God, why uh, is this working so terribly today? I don't know. AC? <laughs> Sandy, fix your stuff. I don't know what the deal is. Come on, you're you're, uh, you're a almost, podcasting professional of what? How many years? Almost Come six. On. Yeah, for some. yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. is weird. Yeah, so, um, uh, but yo, go ahead. Are, are they are the media groups playing nice? Is everybody? No, so far. Yeah, so far. So far so good. You know. Uh, I had to bat one or two of them away, but you know they're they're doing fine. They're they're doing cool. Uh, right now, we're waiting for the auction to set up. It's a little late, but the entire stage has gone crazy with music, and just people are dancing now. So we're just having a mini rave. Well, that's cool. Glad yeah. things are going well, and look forward to your full report once you're back or at a point you can just call and talk, not on stream. Talk yeah, off, totally. off the record. All right. Once, well, once I will go back ahead. in the land of the free. <laughs> Pretty oh. much, yeah. Just oppressive Canadian government with their health care and 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 people who look all svet. You know, it's oh man, skinny people. I know. Oh my god, what's that like, Sandy? It's just skinny. I'm getting there. Uh, all right. Anyway. I- <laughs> Yeah, you're getting there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and filter off. You guys continue talks that you are doing, and uh, I will continue doing Bernie Can. Any of you, I guess there's no stream, but I guess you might catch me on some Pony the Live videos, stuff yep. like that, and also the audio will catch. I'll head out. You guys have a show. Yeah, go, go eat Tim Hortons. Go eat lots of Tim Hortons. Dude, I've, lots of their I, have, I have so much. I have had so much Tim's. Like, we, we, we went to Tim's. We had coffee at Tim's. We had sandwich at Tim's. We purchased a giant thing of Tim's coffee and, like, donuts with Tim. But we got our Tim's covered. <laughs> Son, I, I know my Tim's. I know my Tim's. <laughs> I've been told I have to go to a white spot, too, at some point. Yes. Whatever that is. All right, I'm going to go ahead and jump out into this madness. I'll leave you with a whole bunch of noise as I go into the dance room. Dance room time. Oh, 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 okay, I'm hanging up. Bye. (laughs) That was nice and unexpected. I'm glad the things are going well up there in uh, Brony Can. And also, uh, the folks at Brony State are also streaming Buck this weekend. Um, So there's two cons happening at the same time on opposite sides of the planet. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. (laughs) Yep, but everything seems to be going well so far, so congratulations to cons for not catching fire and falling over. (laughs) Oh, I totally forgot that Brony Cal was in in Vancouver. I should have made a joke about Stanley Park. Uh, Oh. (laughs) Don't get lost in Stanley Park. Yep. Um, And the last little thing that I had for news... um, Somebody's phone's ringing. Uh, was the yeah, bad ponies are now an official thing. Thanks to May Larson and Lauren Faust. Uh, Yay. Basically, Larson says they're a different race, and Lauren says that's what I thought. And 
they're deep. They live in deep caves in the mountains and guard Luna's palace. And then Larson added that they all have crushes on Luna because who doesn't in the pony world? Hmm. So how big are they? Um, they're the same size as ponies. I mean, oh okay. The, right. a, a bat pony guard was with Luna in the uh, latest comic, so right. they have oh, the same size. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. So, yeah, I don't think they're celestial Luna sized. No, they're just regular pony sized. <laughs> so when they when they when they come out of their caves, do they do they have to put the big the big uh, the big chip the big chip sunglasses on those big seventies shades on? Yep, because their eyes are. Oh. I have to, the one in the comic looked rather annoyed that he had to be out during the day. He's like, I'm nocturnal, and she's making me do stuff. <laughs> Ugh, whatever my so, plan. So it's, sort of like a, so it's sort of like a Tumblr user. Yes. Being <laughs> drug out being, being drug out to Safeway by their mom. Like, mom. Well, like, uh, I'm, oh, I'm just shut my mouth. Uh, um, I just, uh, just yeah, just get, just get, just give me the boo berry. I don't want, the, I don't want the count chocolate. Just get the boo berry. I don't care. Yummy mummy or nothing. Oh, did you see that they're coming out with those old flavors again? Yes, fruit, and yummy. fruit brute. Oh, yes. I've actually never had them. I've only heard stories about them because they've been gone for decades. Yeah, they've been gone so I am probably super- about as long as we've been alive here. Well, at least you and I, yeah, Mac. Yeah. yeah, speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mr. Old. Spence here is a little older. I predate carbon, I mean, so... He's I mean, an experienced I, individual. Exactly. Yeah, and we're, we're not young either. I, I mean, I can... I can I have very clear, vivid memories of Crystal Pepsi, oh, yeah. and I do kind of. Ha- I kind of have some some memories of New Coke. Yeah, well, yeah. Remember the when you could get a twelve pack of Surge, rail that stuff, and stay up for three days straight with a, as a kid. Uh, you, you know what? I have. Never, I, you know, for my entire time in high school, I never bought Surge because the local Coke distributor just. Gave it away for free at at school at my high school. Back before back before they back before the state said, no, you know it's not probably not the best idea to give young growing minds all this caffeine and sugar, even though you are paying us for it. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, you no just fun. load up load up the trunk of your of your 1989 Camaro just full of surge, just because. Why not? You can predate yeah. that with 1985's Jolt Cola. Yep. I just uh, was in college when that came out. I believe their their motto was uh, "All the sugar and twice the caffeine." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and now we just have energy drinks. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. Now incredibly it's incredibly mainstream. Really, all that is. Yeah, yeah. And now it's like, yeah. I remember when I was a kid, and I was not allowed to drink Red Bull. And now it's just like, who cares? Just, you know, pound three of those and, and be on your way. Oh, man, Red Bull's so gross. So. Oh, you don't like, oh, you don't like Red Bull? Oh, oh man. I'm not a fan of caffeinated uh, cough syrup either, so. Yeah. You don't want your well, syrup? That, that's what it tastes like. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just because I, I grew up in Europe and was around it for, yeah. like, exposed to it a lot longer than it was over here. So whatever. <laughs> yeah. To each their own. Yep. All right. Um. And that's really for the news this week. Not a lot going on. There's some cons. There's some merch. Not a lot really happening in the world of pony. We are three months away from ponies. Like as of today, it's three months to pony. Yeah, it's almost yes. Yeah, exact. Pony and. and uh, the thing is, is that, you know, people are all like, are all like, you know, freaking out because it's like, oh my god, it's the same day that Doctor Who is coming and we're going to have a brand new Doctor too. And it's like, don't worry, you know, because they're, uh, you know, BBC is doing it, is doing the, the debut episode. Yeah, simulcast worldwide at the exact same time. So it's like, you know what, you could catch the new episode of Ponies in the morning. 
and then roll into BBC America in the afternoon if you live in the States. Yep. And get do both. You can you can do a double hit, a double <laughs> shot of, of <laughs> me and right Inky there. and a couple of the other Pony and Who fans are going to be like having a day party or like yeah all right we're gonna show up and watch ponies yeah and then we're gonna watch doctor who and you know stuff yeah so it'll, it'll be like it'll be like what people what everybody did for saints row 4 when yeah. it came out earlier this week or at least what i did when i i just like i'm not gonna go to work today yep so so all right well I didn't mean to derail the show. Sandy. No, it's okay, I am so man. Sorry. I, I'm just like, I'm just like, you know, I'll just, I'll just act like I do on the GCC, except not say certain words or certain things. And I appreciate <laughs> so, it. You can clean yeah. it up when you need to. Yeah, I can, I can behave. Yeah. I can be all adult. <laughs> so we're going to move on to the email segment. Uh, we have. Uh, oh wait, you forgot something. You what? forgot something. Uh. Don't you have a fanfic you you want? Oh, right. Yes. Uh, Life and Times of a Winning Pony by Chingar Kodath. I think I don't know how you would pronounce that. Pronounce that. Um, has updated and is on chapter. Holy crap! There's a lot of them. I'm waiting for Fim Fiction to load. Come on, Fim Fiction. Nighty, pay your bills. Um. You know, I don't know how much uh, Nighty pays attention to you or pays attention to the podcast because he's busy running a major site. Um, and Film Fiction is an awesome site. It's a, oh, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, I mean, I just, I'm just looking at it. I mean, you know, content is purely generated by the user, so it's hit or miss with the content. But the site itself is awesome. Oh, and my goodness. the one thing I, I really hope is that uh, is that they come out with a really that is eventually they come out with an app for like android or ios that would be perfect yeah that would be great um and yes yeah, somebody rec- remember that hey we haven't done the talked about the comic this week have you guys read the comic yet i i it, my comicsology beeped at me let me know that the new uh issue was out however i haven't uh, picked it up yet ah okay um, yeah. I, I, you know, I don't know how you guys are with spoilers. Personally, I don't care about spoilers. I, I'm one of those few, few people who are like, who are like, oh, spoilers, yeah, spoil it for me, because then that makes me more excited to go check it out for myself. I'm not yeah. one yep. of those people who are up over. Well, yeah, but I know. Um, so. Yeah, Life and Time of Winning Pony. It's updated. That's on freaking chapter twenty one at this point, and it's incomplete still. And 276,138 words. That's two novels worth. What? Okay, so what is... Because uh, I haven't read this story, so what's... What's what's um, the cliff note in this? Basically, it's Cloud, yeah. Click, Cloud Kicker and Blossom Forth. It's Magical Background Ponies Lesbian Adventures. <laughs> sort of. Uh, lots of interpersonal conflict, relationship stuff, uh, Cloud Kicker being, uh, an incredibly forward pony. Uh, it, it's, it's a good story. I liked it a lot, and, uh, I'm a couple chapters behind, but it's a good read and a very long one. So if you want something to really sink some time into, it, uh, it's a pretty good read. Pony Charlie Sheen, that's right. Uh, so, this week, uh, last week we talked to Ted Anderson, the writer for the Pinkie Pie Micro, and this week's Cutie Mark Crusaders Micro. It's also drawn by the same person as the Pinkie Pie one, so the art, you can guess, is very good. So, this week's uh, comic talk, for those... The CMC are doing their CMC thing, and they go on an adventure and find what they think is a gym. Turns out it is a mimicker, and not the to- toothy maw in a treasure chest type mimic, thankfully. Not that kind of monster in Equestria. Um, but it's basically, it's a creature that can turn itself into various objects. It does, and basically say that the 
mimickers don't settle on a form until they're adult. They don't know their talent. And so the CMC are like, oh, well, that's great. Um, it can be a cutie marker skater, too, until it finds out what it wants to do. And the CMC proceed to do shenanigans. Uh, have it train, change into a whole bunch of different things. And try out various uh, forms and shapes. And eventually they tire the poor thing out and it runs away. And they have to hunt down the poor, sad, missing changeling, or mimicker. And uh, the CMCs learn a lesson. Uh, It's pretty light on the actual story, but the art is really good. Um, I really liked it. Um, The art style is actually different than the one in the Pinkie Pie macro. The, The lines are a lot more sketchy. The but it's it's a very soft childlike style, um. So, I I really thought that they did a fantastic job with this one. The expressions, the action. Um, there's even a callback to the fact that Sweetie Belle has a Poniachi doll, the same type that Pinky had in her micro series. Right. Nice. Um. So yeah, I suggest you pick it up because it's really good. Don't have to uh, gush about it too much. Next month is going to be Celestia with uh, Georgia Ball and Amy Meberson. Um, I don't think Georgia Ball has written a story yet, but Amy Meberson was the artist who did the uh, Nightmarity arc. Mm, uh, wow. Five through nine, or five through eight. Oh, wow. So cool. it's going to be really well drawn. Oh, I so yeah. want somebody to put out that that reveal page as a poster. Oh, yeah, the... uh, I would pay anything for that reveal page in poster form. The giant Celestia illustration? No, no, Nightmare Rarity. Oh, yeah. Yeah, where she she arrives on the scene. The the hero page. Yep. And also, we'll have uh, number 10 for next month, too, so we'll have two Pony Comics. Yeah, I need to really catch up. I mean, I catch... I've been keeping on with the, the main... The main the main issues, but I kind of been following a bit behind on the uh, on the micro series. I think I'm only up to Pinkie Pie right now, so I still got both Applejack and the CMC to catch up to. Yeah, I mean they're really good, and I think that they've like the the first couple of like the main six micros they were really hit and miss, but the uh, the current ones, good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I I kind of I, I was I was a lot of people really kind of ragged on the first issue with Twilight, um, but I honestly kind of liked it. I thought it was a very very charming, happy story. You know, the 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 art the art wasn't quite up to par with the other ones, but it was still a, a pretty solid story, I think. But mm-hmm. that's just me. So. <laughs> Oh, yes, and uh, A Missing Pony points out that, yes, there is an MST3K reference in uh, the CMC Micro. Cool. Yes, Rarity, what's Rarity's discarded dress designs, and they figure, hey, you are you can change into dresses, so uh, why don't you do it? And they do. <laughs> and, yeah, oh. Fatalite a love dress. <laughs> Uh, okay, so now I think we can get to the emails. Are we okay? Can we get to the emails, listeners? Let me know. I say I say I don't care about spoilers, so they talk about spoilers. Oh, man. <laughs> Jet engines confirmed for Equestria, just so you know. Those dang oh, unicorns geez, is... and their magic tech. Uh, I need a... Uh, I need a... I, you know, because... Uh, I'll, I'll talk about it later. I'll talk about it later in the episode. Okay. So, so uh, you can always send us emails to bronyville at gmail.com. I will read first, Emma will read second, Mark will read third, and we'll uh, just run through the emails we got this week. Because we actually got some pretty good ones. Well, we always get good ones. We appreciate our emailers. So, first off, Hey, Sheffers. Oh, 
That sounds so cute. AC, starry, and honorable guests. Hey, I'm Defmec. You're honorable now. Good job. I am a relatively uh, new listener to the podcast. However, I have listened to some of the other projects you have done in the past. You keep my long days and Lone Star comics bearable, so thanks to all you do. I must say, as it is traditional for emails to come in, that Rarity is best pony, and AJ is a close second. Anywho, I'll jump right to the meat of the email. I'm going to be going to Nightmare Nights and was wondering, oh great chefy one, if you still need volunteers. I would love to help out any way I could, as I have found that volunteering can be fun and a good way to meet new people. Thanks for reading this, and keep up the good work. Sincerely, Damien Fox. P.S. Star for the wall of text. Can't into words goodly. Sent from his iPhone. So, Mark, how would people contact you for volunteers? Um, through the website, I would hope, or the, the email address... Yeah, you can you can mail you can email us at volunteers at nightmarenights.net. You can send us an email at nightmarenightsdallas at gmail dot com. Um, we will need plenty of volunteers because we, while right. we have an ace staff, we can't do everything ourselves, and we will need people to help run some things. So, Mark here will need a whole bunch of people willing to help him out, right. and uh, you know. Setting up rooms, tearing down rooms, keeping an eye on things as the show runs, helping yep. out, answering questions. Checking badges, making so, sure. Uh, so since this is Texas, will, be, will they? Will you guys provide the kettle prods, or do they have to bring their own? Um, I, well, <laughs> yeah, there was, crowd control, crowd, crowd yeah. control, you know? Well, there was a request for a taser in the budget. I'm not sure we approved it. <laughs> um <laughs> You might have to uh, bring your own. Don't bring your own. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, yes, we are looking for plenty of volunteers for Nightmare Nights. Just send us an email at nightmarenightsdallas at gmail.com, and we'll make sure it gets to the right person. Uh, because, well, it's important. Cons live on their volunteers. So, and, and there'll be some perks for you. Don't worry about that. All right. Um, so, uh, Mark or Mdefmec, when he wants to take the next email? Mm, I'll read it. Um, hey, I was at Vintage Stock today buying the CMC Micro Series comic. The cashier and I got to talking, and he said that he was that he tried watching a couple of episodes on Netflix, but didn't really quote get it. He then asked what my favorite episode was. I told him Art of the Dress, and immediately regretted it. While that is one of my favorite episodes, I felt like saying Sonic Rainbow, which would have sounded cooler and less girly. Hopefully he'll check it out anyway. Love you guys very much. Mr. Onosa. We love you too, random citizen. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, Art of the Dress is a good episode if you're an artist and you know how to deal with if you've had that problem before. But Sonic Rainbow is also a very good introductory episode as well. So, I don't yeah, think I was about, to, about to say there's, there's episodes that are definitely My Little Pony episodes, and then there's episodes that are, that, that are just, like, cool episodes. Like, Sonic Rain Boom, uh, it's just a je overall good episode just to introduce people to. I think also Nightmare Nights. Good if you've got to have a good one-off introductory. Oh, yeah. 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 Lesson, Lesson Zero. Yeah. Lesson Zero, definitely, definitely. Episodes uh, that feature all the characters are yeah. usually the best. Yeah. And Art of the Dress does have all of them, but it is a rarity-focused episode. Which, I mean, if you want to get more people interested in Best Horse, uh, that is to say rarity, um, the two Luna fans That's scoff behind me, um, <laughs> that, you know, you could uh, start about pretty much anywhere. So, you didn't script too bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it could have been worse. You know, I think I think he definitely handled it pretty well. Yeah. So, all right. I guess uh, you want me uh, take this. Yeah, I'll take this next one. Okay. Yep. Good. Good day, favorite podcaster, a la God Empress Kitty and First Servant Story, Pico Pie here. Thank you for pronouncing my name correctly, AC. After suggesting more fan fiction without realizing Nighty was going to be on your show, I decided to hide for a week at my girlfriend's. 
making sure to get no work done whatsoever. Unlike Chef, unlike Chef, who is giving a good good solid effort at loosing weights i being a larger man myself i know it can be hard and want to encourage you at the same time i want you to know how much i love your list your listeners have for you so please don't overdo it too quickly the god in first kitty has no patience for dead servants in fandom news, you probably heard about Fim Fiction possibly selling merchandise in the re- in the near future. They have a survey up, which listeners can link from the Google Doc. After taking the survey, you can actually see the results, including open comments. Here are my favorites. The very first comment. Comments. <laughs> Nighty is fat. XDDDDD. Don't feel sad, Nighty. I'm even fatter. Anyway, I'd like to ask who or what is Fimfix OC? Please don't let it be a red and black alicorn. Hee <laughs> hee. It would be a good trolling, though. Uh, next comment. I need money. Next comment. Have a nice day. No, I have censored the following with brackets. Hello, Nighty. I would like to request that you make Fim Fiction apples, apples in the shape of, of hoof. <laughs> The reason is I would like this is to make the clopping experience more realistic and enjoyable. What? You should also make Fem Fiction logo shaped chicken nuggets. I would request this because chicken nuggets are apple inducing, and since I get apples from Fem Fiction stories all the, of the time, I believe it would be excellent, an excellent correlation. And this is why you don't leave open comments. <laughs> I love so here. Comments. Okay, so the Apple comments are things. over. <laughs> so here is my question for you, dear servants of the high mighty god Empress Kitty, the second, and guests. What is your favorite type of merch, and what is your favorite pony merch that you own? Uh, Sign Pico Pie. I don't even know if I'm saying his name right. Or his or her pie. name right. But that's okay. Heiko Pie. All right. All right. Naturally. Oh, so, favorite merch, favorite type of merch, and favorite merch that you own. What is it? Um, I really like the minis. I have a bunch of them. Um, I have all of them, actually. All the sets they released. Um... But my favorite piece is probably my Shapeways Derby. Yeah, I'm definitely in the same boat. I I love my favorite are uh, definitely the minis, um, just because uh, they're. I don't know. I the I, I'm not a big fan of the brushables at, at all. I, I I don't know why. I think it might be their faces or something. They look the faces look too baby to me. Yeah. Whereas, whereas, whereas the minis look closer. I mean, even though Fluttershy is basically a recolored Rainbow Dash, it's still closer to the show than the than the brushables are. Well, it's just her without her main extensions, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, but I'd say I'd say my favorite piece of merch that I have is actually uh, the uh, metal. Key- Keychains that you can pick up a hot topic that that's where I picked up. Uh, mine is are the you know the the Derpy Who's and the Rainbow Dash uh, keychains that they had at Hot Topic. I don't know if they still have them or not. I think they have a Fluttershy one too, but those are definitely my favorites. Yeah, you know. I like the minis as well. Although my favorite pieces are a couple of a uh, couple of the uh, about nine inch tall um, rarity plushes. Oh, yeah. My daughter just brought one of them back, actually, from Otakon in Baltimore. Very cool. Nice. Nice. Up here on the shelf so that her her stupid cat doesn't attack them. He seems to have some thing for attacking plushes. Or things. Well, I have no idea what what his deal is. So they have to be banished to the top of a bookshelf. He's like, no, you must pay attention to me, not this other... Plush thing. It's bizarre. He just goes into a rage and attacks them. He's just like, no, you better pay attention to me. Now remember, it's two pats on the belly, third one gets an attack. 
Yep. They're like he's like these are totally substandard cats. I mean, you you rub them on the belly and they just they don't they don't start biting you. That's not how a cat's supposed to act. Yep. So. Dang cats. They need to get patched. Nerf cats. <laughs> New cat, cats beta. Yep. Final cats fourteen, realm reborn. So next email. <laughs> Call of the kitty. Call of kitty for modern war cat. Modern, modern. Oh jeez, my cat. Modern prefer. I don't know. <laughs> okay, that was better than what I was going for. Yeah. Who knows. All right, so next email here. Hello there, Apple Cider, Chef Sandy, Starry Night, and awesome guests. It has been forever since I last emailed you, hasn't it? I've been so busy with commissions that the few times I've managed to get away from Photoshop have been to get out of the house and enjoy the Spanish summer heat, which, by the way, sucks. I've also cut up with your podcast since I've been unable to even check my regular pony news sources. That's how busy I've been. It was fun to hear you theorize about how much spaghetti was going to be dropped at BronyCon and how Equestria Girls was going to rustle the jimmies of all the fandom. I won't dare how I won't dare to say which ones you got right. Both. Regarding Equestria Girls, I was thinking the other day about something. From its very beginning, the show has had a goal of delivering a message to those who watch it in the shape of a more of a moral, a letter to Princess Celestia, or a comment at the end of each episode that makes the journey of the characters meaningful. Then we have Equestria Girls. Now, granted, I like the movie, but I don't see any other message in it besides buy our toys. However, something sometimes entertainment doesn't need to have a message. It just needs to be that, entertaining. So what do you think? Does Equestria Girls have a message? And if it doesn't, do you consider this a bad thing? This is all I wanted to share with you this week. It feels good to send you emails again. I wish you lots of luck for Nightmare Nights Dallas and Brony Can. I shall keep throwing emails at you from time to time. Lots of love from sunny, melting, hazard Spain. James. Eat a lot of ham. I hear Spanish ham is really good. Yeah, but if you're, but if you're in Spain, it's just ham. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Canada, I just it's realized just bacon. Yeah. yeah, I just realized that it's like because we call it Spanish. <laughs> okay, never mind. And they call us, you know, they call bacon American bacon. Ooh, no. Ooh. Um, <laughs> yeah. Did Equestria Girls uh, really have much in the way of um, moral? Uh. Uh, well, see, here's the thing. Kind of like, generic teamwork. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah. kind of a redo of the opener of the series. Well, it's like, you know, it sort of reminds me of how, like, you know, Chef, you know, Chef, and I'm sure you know, Mark, back in, back in the 80s when, you know, we had Transformers and G.I. Joe and I guess, you know, the original My Little Pony, and it was like, those shows were just basically just advertising for the toys. Oh yeah, and you know, and it, it was so uh, apparent that wasn't it the FCC or somebody, some government agency was like, "No, you can't do that." You know, you have to, you have to, you know, you can't just straight make it a blat- blatant advertising towards kids. Yeah, so we're so, hearing things in the 80s and 90s about this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so they they, they, they put it, they, they were forced to put in a moral message. And that was for, you know, like, TV shows. And, and I, I'm kind of seeing, you know, the difference here where it's like, um, you know, because, you know, they're, they're putting the morals in there. Granted, because, you know, you know the, the writers, you know, want to put out a good, a good show that's, you know, meaningful to kids. But you know, the reason Hasbro Zoom is because they have to. Whereas with the Equestria Girls, it's a movie. You know, they they're not under the, the same guidelines as with a TV show, so they can just sort of do whatever they want. You know, and they don't. And that, it doesn't necessarily you know, have. Megan to be. did what she could, but oh, at yeah. the end of the day, I think it was about checking some boxes and getting some fan service and expra- and expanding the brand. It, it, yeah, it was I mean, not we, worth thirteen I mean, episodes. We, 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 yeah, we did. We you know we we did a review of a question goes on our podcast, and we actually we really enjoyed it. But yeah, you know, I'm not gonna make no bones about it. You know, they, I it, it, it was put out to serve. A, Serve a specific purpose for you know Hasbro's interests, you know even though it was a good, it was a good movie, yeah. 
it was okay. Um, but yeah, Equestria Girls, yeah, they check their boxes, and they're it's out there, and the toys are out there now, and I have no idea <laughs> how it's doing. But I suppose we'll find out at their next quarterly announcement meeting, where they'll be like, my little pony's doing great! Equestria Girls, not so much. Oh, geez, have you seen, I saw a couple pictures of it on my, on Tumblr, but, okay, you know how creepy the MLP costumes are that they, they go around? Oh, yeah, those, they're like... Yeah, have you, have you seen the Equestria oh, Girls ones? Oh, Nightmare Fuel. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's like, it's like, okay, I don't know if, if any of your listeners ever have seen the pictures of, like, the anime girls in real life, that's mm-hmm. what they look like, and it's terrifying. Yeah. It reminds me of the yeah. scene in The Wall, when they're um, in uh, We Don't Need No Education. And the, yeah. the the children on the assembly line with the, the masks that they wear at a certain point. Ugh. Yeah, definitely. If you need some images for a creepy pasta, you're right, and <laughs> Look at it, look at those Equestria Girl ones. Those are yeah. those are pretty nightmare inducing. <laughs> Just wait till somebody makes one and brings it to a con. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure. This is my really and, scary Halloween costume, kids. <laughs> and and in every picture somebody takes at the con, it's just they're there, just standing in the background, staring. <laughs> at it. They're like they're like Slender. Exactly. The, this fandom's version of Slenderman. Yeah, uh, Slender Mares. <laughs> So yes, watch out. All right. Next email. Uh, oops. All right, bear with me a second. I'm scrolling. There we are. Yep. Uh, salutations, AC Chef, and certainly incredible guest. A strange name. Here are some sketches which clearly were contained in an attachment. Of yeah, I need to grab those real quick. Entire looking starry uh, for you. Any necessary colored <laughs> pencil taken with a substandard camera at that. One works with what one has. Hope you like. I listen to the show all the time, whether that's while scrubbing the grout of my kitchen or on an 11 hour, 20 mile wilderness adventure. That's a, that's a pretty broad range. Thanks yeah. for such a great show. Sincerely, Cyan4, aka Blackstone. Cool. Yeah, um, I forgot to uh, add them into the doc. I had them downloaded, and but I forgot to stick them in the document. They'll be in there by the end of it. He did some sketches. He did a sketch of Apple Cider and Sandy. So we appreciate the fan art we get. Thank you very much. He just imagine this guy or this person uh, out on a wilderness adventure and then they just start getting chased by a bear and they're just running they're just running away and you're just droning off in their in their ear while they're being menaced by a bear yeah yeah we're talking about petty online nonsense while they're being mauled the last <laughs> thing they like, hear is good night every pony ah. yeah here's a here, here's a pro tip even though you probably already know this just grab a bike just grab a bike, put it up in front of you. The uh, the bear will think you're Optimus Prime and run away. <laughs> okay. I stole that. I stole that joke from Smogcast. That's not mine. Okay. I'm so far behind <laughs> on that podcast. Gosh. That actually, that they said that joke like way. It's, it was like a way early episode, so you. It's okay if you forgot about it. <laughs> okay. Well. But anyway, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and there's the last. And that's that's the last one that I will take. Okay. Uh, good day to you, Chef Sandy, guest co-host, guest, and random stallion in the way back backgrounds. I guess that's you, I'm Def Mac. Why? I thought it was the co-host. Huh? I don't know. No, I said Sandy, guest co-host, guest, and random stallion way in the back. So it's me. Guest co-host, Mark, and then somebody, somebody else. Oh, my gosh. There's somebody that, that we don't one. see. They're could behind be, us. Could have been that one guy creeping up behind you, licking your face. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Jeez. Quick, take off, take off your Oculus Rift. Oh, man, I'm scared. <laughs> Uh, it is good. It is good to see this ship back under your loose cannon control, and let's hope that this episode do not need to be glassed. 
First off, Bronyville Health Heal Cast. Health this, cast. Oh, Okay, yeah. First off, Bronyville Healthcast this week. I am down to 97.5 kilograms from 98 of last week. Thanks. So how is it to eat solids again? Some weeks ago, a listener asked about the difference. Oh, wait, uh, okay, yeah. So yeah, let's just answer that first one. How's it, how's it feel uh, graduating up to Gerber graduates? Um, <laughs> pretty good, actually. Um, I still have to be pretty careful in what I eat, but I can now have, like, chicken and a lot of basically solid foods that fit within my diet plan so it is nice to be able to go to a restaurant and order like a tiny appetizer and that be your meal and you know get to eat with regular people again and i assume you chew the hell out of everything oh yeah (laughs) yeah Um, yeah i imagine you can't just start swallowing where there's original and be okay oh god that'd be terrible um, okay, well, that's good to hear. Yep. Uh, some weeks ago, a listener asked about the difference between furries and bronies. And this week, I came across a video by MLP reviewer Dr. Wolf, who is a brony, not a furry, did with his brother, who is a furry, but not a brony. And he includes uh, you got YouTube that? links. And he includes a YouTube link. I haven't seen it, Reading so I don't know what, the, what they said in the video. Um... What what do you guys remember what that listener asked? I don't. Um let's see. Well, he's, he's just, asked, he's, oh. We were kind of like, yeah, there's really not that much difference. Um but Well I mean if you if you if you get to the technical side of it, you know, furries are about anthropomorphic animals. Talking. And then brony, yeah, yeah, anthropomorphic, talking, sentient animals, and bronies are into anthropomorphic, talking, sentient animals. You know, it's just that the styles, styles the, are the different, feet. and general acceptable content is slightly different, though not really that different anymore. Yeah, um, you're you're all talking about talking cartoon animals in some form or another. Yeah, it's sort of like, you know, when you have people, when you have car guys who are into big, massive monster truck SUVs and pickup trucks, and you have guys who are in the muscle cars, you know, they're both technically cars, but they're both very different. You know, they, does that work? Does that analogy work at all? I don't oh, know. I mean, that, that works. Uh, okay. All right. Good. And I don't sound completely stupid. <laughs> um, also, my fanfic recommendation of the week is the audio version of of, of Upheaval Breaking Point by Visiden Visidain, as read by Forest Rain. It is complete, and so is the is the follow up story. Forest Rain uh, is doing a really good job. In fact, I would recommend that you find a good, comfortable chair. Side back, close your eyes and just listen. Maybe turn off the light. The story is a bit dark, but not grim dark. Okay. I thought it was gonna be like, just listen, turn off the light, throw throw down some rose petals, light some candles. Feeling a little weird now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, that's cool. No. Uh, uh, so, and he includes a link to it uh, over at mlpaudiobooks.net, which is actually a really great website to find uh, audio recordings of, uh, of various uh, stories that people write. I highly recommend it personally. Um, so, yeah, that's by uh, wow. that, that led that led that email was from Twisted Haywire. And as P.S., I have lost track of how many email I have read on the show. Do you know? Do you know? Sent via Derpy Mail. So interesting. I don't know. I, I don't run this show. What, what do you know, Sandy? Um. Nothing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was looking at. I got distracted by the various audiobooks because I do audiobooks professionally and was considering that I should. I would be. I would like to try my hand at some pony stuff. Um, we well, definitely, definitely could. I mean, MLP audiobooks really kind of flies under the radar with a lot of people. It's, it really is a good website to find. It's just as as a as a um, 
curator of, of audiobooks. It's a really good website to check out, and I think more people need to check it out. Um, and they also have a Russian language. They have English and Russian, which I thought was rather odd, an odd uh, language selection. So you can find both English and Russian audiobooks on there. So, yeah, definitely check check out that site. I use it. I use it quite a bit, actually. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and that's it for the emails this week. Um, <laughs> uh, we'll just go to our five star iTunes bronies and whatnot. Uh, we have like eight hundred and fourteen ratings on iTunes right now. Oh my and God. Uh, this last week we have four from SD Charger Fan Arizona, Five Iron Brony, Silverbug Rambler, and Blackstone. We appreciate Check. that. It keeps us we'll up there. The um, I'm gonna pop up in iTunes and see. We were up in like top thirty this week. That was nice. Um, nice. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, we uh, we're always up there and. Not many other pony pod. I don't think any other pony podcast that, but uh, Pony Time with Alpha and Five Iron have ever really shown up there. So. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't think we've ever shown up there, though. I don't really pay attention. Yeah, and I, mean, I hope yeah. we never. I, I hope I hope we don't show up there because we're <laughs> yeah, it's like we are not. We are not. We are not. We are not a good benchmark for the Brony fans, and I'll just say that. Yeah, just saying. And uh, we had a couple donations this week from J. Sevy and T. Engel. We appreciate the uh, donations, and those will be helping Ap- Apple Cider get his butt out here to Dallas. Nice. Um, and now we're down to the very end. Our cool things. So, my cool thing this week is totally not pony related at all. It's saltybet.com. A. <laughs> Online Mugen fighting tournament that's eternal. Uh, basically, people sign up and bet fictional money on combat between two AI controlled mu- random Mugen characters. So you'll have legitimate fights, you know, between actual fighting game characters, and some days you'll have SpongeBob beating up on uh, Goofy. Or Grover fighting a Matarashu. Or, you know, in 11D Hobillion DBZ characters versus anybody. You know, and it's it's entertaining. You can bet money and, uh, or not real money, but you bet your fictional monies and everybody has a good time. It's a good way to kill some time and uh, try it out. You know, if you like fighting games and, and it's in between the big tournament season, so... You know, watch AIs play fighting games and bet fake money on them. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I've I've actually heard of stuff like this uh, this before, but I didn't know there was a there was a uh, there was a uh, one from Mugen. That's yeah, cool. um, and people ask them, well, how do you have a tournament in a fighting game as unbalanced as Mugen? Well, you don't. It's that's, all random. That's why. They, yeah, that's they use fake. Money yeah, fun. I mean, they do occasionally do an actual tournament, but it's all of the most broken characters thrown up against each other to see who can be the most broken. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like they do it to have fun. Remember how yeah. back in the day video games used to be all about fun? You know. Fun. Casuals. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's check fun. that out Jeez, if you get some time to kill. Casuals. Button's mom would be very disappointed in you. <laughs> in you and Alright, uh, all right, my cool thing isn't really cool thing. I'm just you're just like, hey, you can do shameless shameless self promotion, so I'm like, okay, I'll do that. Um, it's a link to my fim fiction page. I've put up a couple stories. One of them is complete, the other one has been cancelled because uh, the one that was canceled was sort of just me just stretching out, pra- uh, trying out a few things. I was like, okay, this story isn't really going anywhere. So um, I'm taking the remains of that story I've canceled, and I'm whipping them up into a new story that I- I'll admit 
it's probably not going to be, I'm not going to put up until like the end of the year just because I, I don't have a whole lot of time to really work on, you know, writing fanfics and stuff. So I'm just sort of taking my time. I'm just taking the stuff that I learned from what I've wrote, wrote so far in that story and just sort of like taking it and applying it to this new thing I'm doing. Uh, and the general gist of the story is, uh, the, the story that I'm trying to do is, oh, Equestria is this planet in, 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 in the galaxy. And it's just sort of, it's been hanging around there, but oh, look, 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 these humans have found this, have found Equestria. And they're checking out Equestria, and the humans screw something up, and their arch, and their, and their bitter, bitter enemies, uh, also find Equestria, and, you know, the, the enemies, they're like, hey, Equestria is a really handy planet to have to help us conquer the humans, so we're going to try to take over Equestria. So, and all kinds of shenanigans happen, so, uh, that's sort of what the story is going to be. It sounds really stupid, but I promise it's going to be better than what I can synopsize right, right now, so... That'll be coming down the line eventually. Cool. So, um, and that other story, King, is just was just sort of me practicing writing a prose, being like, you know, they, you know, King Sombra really didn't have any story whatsoever. So why don't we just, you know, twist them up and add a love crafting spin to them? Let's make him a, a little crafty and elder, elder god, and see what happens. So that's what that one. Would, was about so yeah that's my cool thing cool and uh mark i i will uh i recommend frankly and i'm sure this won't come as a shock to most of your folks out there are probably already familiar with john green's stuff him and, and his brother the vlog brothers but particularly the crash course i i, I bring this since i know a lot of bronies are of school age uh if you can get hooked into his world and U.S. history crash courses, especially, it's uh, it's good stuff and he's better all, than a lot of he's better than a lot of cram courses I've seen actually. The crash course is really really good. Crash, I have a, a lot big, of I'm, videos. All I of them. I, yeah, I, I've I've been checking out Crash Course for several months now. It it's. It's really, really good. I'm particularly fond of it. Especially, especially. Oh, definitely, definitely. If you if you're in high school, uh, definitely check out their U.S. history because you'll learn a bunch of stuff that they don't teach you. Well, he in, takes a very he's very much an economist. He takes a very economical uh, and political view of history. He's, uh, to, to use an old old school uh, term from my college days, he's probably a Marxist when it comes to history. And uh, yeah. so he takes a real, real economic bent toward, you know, follow the money bent on history. And it's it's definitely different than here's a bunch of dates and here's a bunch of... He hates running through piles of dates and battles. It's not his thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, from what I understand, you know, because it was actually a little while ago they got, they got done with the, the part of U.S. history that uh, I'm sure you know, Mark, that uh, what I'm talking about, that they had the hardest time covering... And that was the matter of slavery. Um, oh, yeah. um, they they had a really hard time with that because that's still. I mean, even even though that that all happened so so long ago, that's still in some parts of the country a real hot bu- hot button topic. So, you know, that was that was a really interesting uh, way they went about uh, discussing that particular topic. And yep. Also, also, yeah. uh, he he tries to cover everything, you know, with with a with a humorous edge. But there are times where he makes it quite clear. He says, "There's you know, there's there's nothing funny about this topic. We're just going to cover this and move on because, you know." Yeah, yeah. He doesn't make light of things that don't that don't need to be made light of, but he'll make light of plenty of other stuff. Yeah, he like you know, poke, he likes to poke fun at himself in the past. He he keeps he keeps referring to his his past high school age self. As, as as an idiot, <laughs> um, yeah, and then and then you have the exception to all of history, which is the Mongols. Yes, just, exactly. Except the Mongols. It's just like, oh, you know, history. The rules of history history usually happen this way, except if you're the Mongols. 
because they're the Mongols and they don't care. They don't Get care. A, they have a T-shirt for that in the in their store. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And yeah, if you're already familiar with that, you can check out Phil Plate. He goes by the name Bad Astronomer on uh, Slate.com. He's their uh, science blogger. Oh, nice. So if you already know yeah, uh, I, the Blog Brothers stuff, you can go out to Slate.com and check out Bad Astronomer. Yep. Well, just really quick, since you mentioned Phil Plate, uh, his book, uh, Death from Above, or is it Death from Above or Death from, Death from the Skies? It's either one of those two. It's Phil, it's Phil Plate's book. Really good book. Talks about all the different uh, ways. Uh, lucky all lucky the different, Bugger lives up in Boulder. Yeah. His his book, uh, Death from Above, uh, is, is a great way to show you how many different ways the galaxy is trying to kill you. Exactly. <laughs> And why you shouldn't worry about it because, yeah, you vo- you survived this long. Not really much you can do about it. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool stuff. Um, cool. So I'm just gonna run down the uh, cool bit segment segments here. Uh, you can always find us at bronyshow.com or bronyvillepodcast.com. You can email us at bronyville at gmail.com. You can join us roughly every Saturday, noon Pacific, at Justin TV Bronyville Podcast. We appreciate our iTunes reviews. It keeps us up there near the top, and uh, we're really well reviewed. Please keep it up. Uh, you can listen to our show on Celestia Radio every Tuesday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. UTC. Um, we don't have the episode 63 problem that you guys do, and um, yeah. you can follow us on Twitter at Bronyville and at Chef Sandy. And uh, the meetup groups we have are Bronies of Northern California, which is AC's baby, and North Texas Bronies, which is the one I'm currently paying for. Uh, Convention-wise, Brony Can is this weekend, so don't have to list that anymore. AC will be at Sacramento Brony Expo and Nightmare Nights Dallas. I will be at, I can guarantee at least, Brony Fanfare and Nightmare Nights Dallas. DerbyCon South is still on the list, but we will see what happens. Mm. Um, oh, uh, really quick. I might uh, uh, do the scheduling uh, thing at work. I might be able to be at SojinCon uh, this coming weekend over in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So if there's any bronies in South Dakota uh, who are going to SojinCon, I might be there. And I'll also be at Nightmare Nights Dallas later in November. Sweet. So. All right, so uh, on that note, uh, sleep well, everyone. Good night, Brownieville. Good night. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, um, I'm going to stop the recording. All right, I have crash. to get going.